This is one of those videos that I wished I had when I started out software development because this video will teach you all the basics of Git along with the commands, what they do and how to use them. This will kickstart your software development career. So let's dive into Git for absolute beginners. But before we do, let me first do a quick shout out for people finding my channel for the first time. In addition to subscribing to my channel, you can also become a member. And for a small amount a month, you can support me with my channel right here and all that I'm doing. Um, this also gives you some perks like early access to my videos, uh, priority reply to your comments, a nice little badge behind your name. But also in the senior developer tier, I got two tiers set up right now junior developer, senior developer, um, you will also get a shout out in one of my videos as a senior developer. So here it goes. We have four people this time. So amazing. Pierre Houjet, someone who calls themselves Crossworkers, Parajim Singh and David Silverlight. Thank you so much for joining or upgrading your membership. And of course, to all of my other members who are out there as well. Um, do you want to know what this is all about? Because you're not a member yet, check out the join button below this video. Um, and now quickly onto that Git stuff. Now, before we dive headfirst into Git, let's take a small step back and talk a little about why we want a version control system anyway. With a version control system, you can save all the files that have to do with your project in one place and you can always have a look back at the history and restore an older version if that's what you want or need. Um, kind of like OneDrive or Dropbox or Google Drive or any other cloud file provider that you might have, um, but these are specialized in source code. So that's Git in this case. Um, because version control systems like Git are specifically for source code, you can compare source code files with older versions on a line or even a character level. So this can be very useful for a whole lot of reasons. Um, for instance, a new version of your software introduced a bug and you want to figure out where in your changes um, that might have happened. Instead of combing through all the files that you have um, you know, checked in, you can now just focus on the lines that have changed and it should be very easy to track down where the bug happened. You can fix it and your users are happy. So, you know, it's what, what's not to like. Um, if you're old, like me, you might remember earlier version control systems like Visual Source Safe. While you could compare files on a line level with that as well, um, you would still check out a complete file or even multiple files. Um, and checking out a file means that you locked those files and no one else was able to edit them until you check them back in. Like taking a book from the library and no one can read it until you bring it back, right? Um, well, you could read it, you just can't change the code. So not really a great example. So if someone wanted to make a change in that same file, they would have to wait for you to be done to bring back the book. This was especially fun if that person had a day off, went on vacation or left for another job altogether. Of course, with admin rights, you could check the file in forcefully, but um, you still would not have the change that the person made uh, locally maybe, and those would just be gone, right? So that was not really optimal. Anyway, there have been a number of source control systems like that, um, but at some point Git came around, I think around 2005, um, and that grew out to be the standard versioning system that we know today. That is the, the, the system that most people know and love and um, services are based off that like GitHub. Now, before we continue with the rest of this video, let me tell you what will happen, how I have arranged this video. I will start talking about the typical use of Git and what you do with it. And I will start mixing in some Git terminology, um, which is mostly one on one, also the Git command that you need to use for the operation that I'm talking about. Not all terms will have a specific command tied to it, um, but at least, you know, if you know the terms, uh, then you will have something to look for with your favorite search engine. So you have some kind of keyword that you can use. Um, now, these commands will also show up on screen, of course, and you will hear a little that should get you going for yourself or will at least give you some hints on what to search for. Like I just said in your favorite search engine um, so you can find more. Or of course, let me know down in the comments below as you can always do with my videos if I should make um, videos following from this video um, going into each of the separate commands or the things that they do. Um, and I will try to maybe build a complete course uh, based off this video. So ready? Let's go. Well, almost. 
Uh, before you do any of this, if you haven't worked with Git before, and chances are you haven't, else you wouldn't be watching this video, um, you want to download and install a Git client. So that's something that you separately need to install on your uh, machine. This can be either the official Git command line client or a graphical client, because there is a lot of those. Uh, the latter will probably still need to install the command line anyway under the hood. Um, so what you use is totally up to you. I personally use some kind of a weird mix of the command line to actually type the commands and a graphical client, the GitHub desktop client in this case, simply because I like to see the actual status in kind of like a graphical way. Um, however, for the actual commands, I usually like the command line and just um, clickety click through that. Whichever you choose, um, I do think it's important that you know the command line commands and what they do. So that's why I created this video. Now, installing will be very much dependent on the OS you're running and the, how that's set up. Um, so that's a bit out of scope for this video. There's a lot of ways to do this. Uh, I will skip over that for now. Uh, but if you would still like some help with that, please ask me nicely in the comments and I will see if I can answer to uh, that and help you get going. Now, with all the Git references um, that I'm making here, they're independent of any service that you might use to host your repositories. Um, these will probably, there will probably be some references to GitHub here and there, um, but wherever I say GitHub, you can also substitute that for GitLab or Bitbucket or Azure repos or any other service that you might want to use or maybe something self-hosted, um, although that might lack some, some features. Okay, so for real this time, let's go. As opposed to the versioning systems that I just talked about earlier, Git is a distributed version control system. So this basically means that there is one repository that lives on a central server, but each developer can clone their own separate copy of the repository on their own systems. And with that copy, that is the one that the developer can work on. Now, once a branch is cloned to your local machine, um, you can all start editing the same files in the same repository independently of each other. Um, and whenever you start sending that back to the server repository, um, then there are potential conflicts that you need to merge. That is one of the trade-offs of this system. It allows you to all work on the same stuff simultaneously, but at some point it needs to come together um, and then you can have conflicts. But an upside to that is that you can do anything you want on your local repository and as long as you don't push it to the server, um, no one will ever know. So that makes it ideal to try out some things with you know, your code um, or the repository or whatever you're trying to experiment with. And if you mess up completely, just delete the whole thing and you can start over again. Now there are roughly two scenarios for using Git, either a repository that you have full access to, for instance, a project that you're doing for work or some kind of hobby project that you might be doing for yourself, um, or for a repository that you don't have full access to, for instance, when you want to contribute to an open source project which is something really cool to do. And I definitely recommend you doing that as well. If you want to know more, let me know down there in the comments. Um, in case of that ladder contributing to open source, where you don't have full access, you might want to fork the repository first. Forking, however, is very much a service thing, so a GitHub thing. Um, there is no actual command to do it. A fork just means that you will clone a whole repository, including its history, to your own account, where you do have all the rights to push changes, to make all the changes that you want, uh, and start making your changes from there in code. However, this fork will still have the original repository as its remote, which means that you can still make the changes and then open a pull request to the original repository. So it basically means you have your copy, you do your work there, and then you open a pull request um, to the original authors, like saying, hey, please pull in this code. Now, whether you want to fork that repository or not, you will still always have to clone it to your local machine. Um, and there you can start making the changes in whatever tool or IDE you want, Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, Writer, Notepad, Vim, I don't know, you name it. Um, so when you do make the changes, you want to add them to the staging area. So you have a couple of changes and now you need to tell Git that those are the changes that you want to send to the server at some point. This can be done by running the add command with only one file, so the exact file name, or using a wildcard, or just use git add dot to add everything in the current folder um, recursively. So if you're using a graphical tool, it's a bit easier to select a file or even the lines that you want to add to your um, staging so that you can send it back to the server later. Now from that staging, you can push your changes to the remote repository. 
This will only work if you actually have the right permissions to that repository, like I just mentioned. If you're working from a fork, you will have to open a pull request to ask the maintainers of the original repository if they want to pull in your changes. But still, in this case, you would push your changes first to your forked repository, and from there, you would open the pull request to the remote repository that is maintained by other people. Um, or, you know, you could also maintain a fork because you don't like the direction that um, another repository is going, or maybe the original repository isn't maintained anymore, um, and you're going to create a fork and from there, you know, go your own ways. That's kind of like what the fork would mean, right? Now, depending on your development strategy, it could also be that the main branch is protected. In that case, you can't push directly to the main branch, which is like the main line that all the changes have to come into together. Um, and you will need still to open a PR from a different branch that is created on your repository. This way is typically used to force the developers to let their code be reviewed by others um, as part of that pull request, as well as doing automated build pipeline checks before merging it into that main branch. Now, the branching commands are a bit different and less intuitive than the rest, if you ask me. Um, so to create a branch and directly switch to it, you use the git checkout minus b and then your branch name. Um, and to simply switch to an existing branch that might be there already, you just do git checkout and then the branch name. Always make sure that you're on the right branch before doing anything. You'll thank me later. Now, this was all mainly for a new repository or a forked repository, but maybe you've cloned a repository before earlier and you want to make sure that you have the latest changes because your colleagues and the people you work with um, has been very busy and they have been making all kinds of changes. Then you need to pull the changes from the remote repository. If you have changes locally that haven't been pushed yet, this operation will fail and you will either have to undo the changes that you have locally or put them on a new branch or stash them. Stashing basically means that you set them aside for now, you pull down the new changes, and then you can um, rewind those changes that you made locally on top of that. Now, when you're happy with the changes that you have locally, you can commit them. As you might have already gotten from the staging to changes earlier, a commit can be one file or one change and multiple files and many changes. A commit is basically a certain set of changes and um, a main concept within Git. So you can do very powerful things based on commits. Um, you will see that whenever you start digging into this. You can rewrite history, take commits, and put them on a separate branch. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff with that. And also that's kind of like where it becomes very complex with all this Git stuff. Now, when you are ready to commit, you can add a little message to that, um, describing what has changed and really make sure that you add a descriptive message to that because other people will review the history. Um, so, you know, make sure that they understand what has been going on and what has been changed in this commit. Um, so this commit will still only live in your local repository. Um, so until you push the changes, they are not on the server. But whenever you do get that commit in there and you push it, um, then, you know, it will be available to other people as well. Now, lastly, depending on if you made the changes on a separate branch or if you're working on a fork or not, you might need to open that pull request that I've mentioned already a couple of times. And congratulations, you now know the basics of Git. You've made changes and now they are on that remote repository for other people to see. Hooray, job well done. I'm proud of you. Now, I can imagine this went a bit fast, um, so you know there's a lot to take in here. Of course, feel free to watch this video as many times as you want um, and let me know if there are any questions down below in the comments. Now, Git is very powerful and there's a lot of sides to it, a lot of commands, and there are many, many commands actually. Um, so I don't think there's anyone out there who really knows them all by heart. And so don't feel bad if you have to review them um, or even do use your search engine to look up how to do certain things. I definitely do that all the time. I will add some links down in the video description below um, that might help you with that as well, especially if you're in a scenario and you don't know how to get out of that. Um, there is a very uh, specific link for that. Oh, git um, which will help you get out of those um, predicaments so please check that out if you can't figure out what's going on or of course you can always find me and I will do my very best to help you as well now because of the local repository setup it's very easy to just try out some things without breaking anyone else um, so please just do so just clone that repository and start experimenting because that is often a great way to learn at least that is a great way for me to learn and of course you always can create your own repository on services like github for free um, and start experimenting with that and you can even keep your repositories private so no one will ever see them no one will ever know what's happening and you are not bothering or blocking anyone
one. Of course, let me know if you still have any questions or you want me to go deeper in any of the concepts or commands that I've just shown you in this video. Thank you for again watching one of my videos. Please click that like button. If you've liked this video, hit the subscribe button to be sure that you don't miss anything that I'm putting out there on my channel and it will show up on your feed automatically. Um, also check out this video right here that teaches you how to switch to a new branch while keeping your changes because you can start working on the wrong branch that happens from time to time. And of course, check out this playlist for more Git and GitHub content. Keep coding.